Well, welcome to Hope Today. Happy Monday, wherever you're watching us in Pittsburgh or Central Florida or wherever you're watching us. We are so glad that you're with us. We have a great program for you today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Amanda Brocker. I'm here with Cindy Goldman. We have an outstanding couple of guests today. We do. You know, get ready to have your spirit uplifted and your heart inspired because coming up in a moment on Hope Today, we're going to have Stephen McWhorter and Jason Claiborne. They'll be joining us to share their stories and song from their new album. You know, Stephen is a former meth addict who turned into a worship leader and Jason Claiborne is a gospel artist and songwriter who's written for Hezekiah Walker. I've actually sang the songs to church. So I'm really excited just to hear about their story, how they're coming together and all their music is about lifting up the name of Jesus. So super excited for today, Amanda. Amen. And that testimony, I hope that it gives you hope and encouragement today because God has in store for you something amazing for you to walk out. So today receive this testimony. Maybe you need to call someone, let them know, hey, pick up your phone, watch Cornerstone or YouTube. We have so many different ways that people can watch if they missed it at the time it's on. I'm so looking forward to the story because, you know, here we have a church kid, pastor's kid, you know, then far, far, far from God. And then God, I love stories where God is just reeling us in, you know, in, in that loving kindness he draws us, it says in the scriptures. And, and it's just so important to see that, to see that uh, and, and understand that no matter where you're at today or where your loved one might be, that God is drawing them, drawing them, pulling them back towards right. himself. All we have to do is yield to it. That's right. And our scripture today goes along with this interview so well. So without any further ado, open your Bibles to John 1, 5. And it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Isn't that good news? I'll tell you what, I, I, I looked this one up and amplified it. Uh, and, oh, of course, my, my iPad just went south on me here, you know, but, uh, you know, a Amy's always the one that's got it here. Here we have it here. Let's go, iPad. Come on, technology. You're going to help me out. Here we go. Uh, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. Isn't that interesting and powerful that the, the, God's light cannot be overcome by anything that Satan has, cannot be stopped by anything. And even if the, the darkness doesn't understand it, it, it can't overcome it in any way. I love that. I just love like Jesus is the light. He is the hope of glory that is in us. And I just think about that, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so no matter what we're walking through, no matter what mountains or valleys or anything that we're facing, time and time again, I have seen in my personal life where I just see the light of Jesus, like pierce the darkness, overcome things and obstacles that are in my lives. And there's nothing too hard for God. So no matter what you're walking through, no matter what darkness you're seeing, even in our world, we live in a very dark world, but you know what? That is why it's so important for all all of us to just share the truth of Jesus, to let Jesus shine like never before. And if you are in need of a little encouragement, a little hope today, you know, we want you to give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483 because guess what? We have spirit-filled, power-filled prayer partners on the other line that would love to connect with you. Amen. It's so important for us to connect with each other and to know that God sees you. And I encourage you today to come out of the dark. It is time that God delivers his people. You know, I think the enemy, Tom, so often just, he binds us with things of this world. Yeah. And God desires for people to break free and to come out of that dark place. And it's only by the light of Christ that that's done. And, and come out of the brokenness. As, as, I'm, as I'm sitting here, I'm just trying to get a sense of what God is saying. I feel like he's saying to someone out there, come out of the brokenness. I see you, he says. I see you in the darkness there, in the, your broken state. Mm -hmm. Come out, come to me. You've tried me before. You said, Lord, it didn't work or something didn't happen or I was hurt in the church or something like that. But God's saying, come out, come yes. to me. I'm going to bring that healing to you, he says. And so just trust him today. You're, you're going to love what, what, we, what our guests have to share with you today. The most important thing is God is hunting, searching, and bringing you to himself today. We're so excited because our next guests are all about inspiring others to come out of that place and give it all to Jesus. Stephen McWhorter and Jason Claiborne are two powerhouse worship leaders who've blended traditional worship, music, and gospel to create a unique sound on their new album, Highest Praise. Stephen and Jason, we're so glad that you're here with us to share your story and your song. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
Thank you. Thank you for having us. We are grateful to be here. We're honored to be here. And um, we're just glad to be a part of the kingdom and what God is doing in music right now. Yeah, we're so glad that you we're all part of the kingdom. We're in this kingdom family together. Now, before we get into your music, you both have great stories of what God has done in your lives. And Seva, we want to start with you. You know, you had a divine deliverance when it comes to addiction. Can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, it's not the kind of thing you would think you'd be sharing uh, someday. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was raised an evangelist son and traveled church camps and all that. But when I was the man I saw on Sunday morning and the one that I saw in private, was it the same? So I was like, if God's real, he's not good. I don't want anything to do with him. Mm-hmm. At 13, I started doing, you know, uh, smoking and drinking and marijuana and all that. And by the time I'm 15, it's cocaine and pills and I'm selling drugs. And by the time I'm uh, 17, I'm a crystal meth addict. I'm using crystal meth every day for nearly um, six years. And during this time, I'm the guy that hates Christianity, like loathes Christianity. Like uh, two things are going to happen when you mention the name Jesus around me. Either I'm going to cuss you out or knock you out. You know, one of the two things. It was crazy. And um, during this time, there were people so burdened for me to come to Jesus. I remember someone telling me how they would literally pull over on the side of the road and just be uncontrollably crying over me coming to Jesus. And I always say that that's the Holy Spirit, right? Because we're, we can be so selfish. That's the Holy Spirit wooing people mm-hmm. to intercede on behalf of someone. Right, right. Um, and for whoever's listening this morning, pay attention to that because uh, the, the Holy Spirit wants to do something through you and in, or in you as much as he wants to do something through you. Um, it's, it's, there's a, there's an appointment there for you. And so God was after me and someone came and gave me this book called the case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Mm -hmm. And, um, having told you how against Christianity I was, this is probably the most miraculous part of the story because I didn't like cuss anybody out or claw their eyes out. You know, uh, I just accepted the book and I was like, okay, thank you. And fast forward, it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm in a room with literal drugs on the side table next to me. Um, there's no music playing softly and quietly in the corner. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's seemingly the most impossible environment for someone to get saved. But I would say, you know, it's the kindness of God to meet a wounded pastor's kid in a place untouched by the hands of man, right? Like to meet me in this place. Um, And we begin to have this internal dialogue that went something like this. He says, Stephen, I'm real. I'm good. I have a purpose for your life. What are you going to do about it? And uh, I was just like, God, I want to give you my life. I want to quit all this addiction, all this darkness, all this depression, all this that I've known for so long. God, I want to, but I can't. I mean, I remember thinking that I couldn't remember what it was like to be a little kid and not need something to make me feel happy, right? You know, something that like that, and I couldn't even remember that. I remember being up for four days straight and having the conversation with myself that you're going to die at a young age. You can't quit. And that's a, that you don't get much lower than that. So I told Lord, I want to quit, but I can't. And then in a thought more powerful than words, the Holy Spirit breathed something into me, I believe, that changed me for the rest of my life. And it was just this, Stephen, you won't do it. I'll do it. And Christianity 101, you know, it says in John, the only thing that the father asks of us is that we believe, right? Believe in the, believe in his son. Yeah. And uh, I believed him like I believe I'm breathing air right now, you know? And I fell to my knees, gave my life to Christ, went from addiction to redemption, from meth addict to worship leader because God's, God's real. It's like, you know, aside from Sunday school, which there's nothing wrong with it. Aside from any of that, pretend you're on a desert island, you picked up this Bible thing and you read it. It's all real. It's like, I remember like like a crazy person running around going, oh my gosh, it's real. Did you guys know this is real? <laughs> so um, it, was, it was incredible. Um, that was kind of the beginning of my story. And I always say this, who knew? I've told this story thousands of times. Who would have known? Because go figure, ex crystal meth addict doesn't look good on a job resume, right? So <laughs> it's the Lord that takes a, something that we think will mark our life with shame and use it to mark our lives with glory. Yeah, yes. 
Stephen, I love that so much. It's just like what you've walked through, what you've gone through, and just how God is using it all for his good and through music. And, you know, Jason, I just want to hear a little bit about your story. You know, like I read and I was doing some investigating about you, but you have a legacy of gospel music that's in your family, and God has just opened so many doors for you to share your gift with the world. Can you tell us a little about yes, that story? It's, it's incredible. A uh, real quick story. Um, I was at my great-grandparents' house, and there was a guy knocking golf balls in the back of the yard every time I would cut grass. And I walked up to his door, knocked on his door, and I said, hey, man, can you stop knocking golf balls in the back in the backyard? Like, stop. And he was like, man, I'm sorry. Lil' Fro never knew that it was Larnell Harris years later. I, and I was, you know, talking crazy to him as a kid. I apologized later on down the line to him, but he was knocking golf balls while I was trying to cut my grandparents' grass, and he lived right next door to him, and I never knew that, wow. never knew who he was. So you never know how close to greatness and destiny that you are. Um, I didn't know the guy given, had given me this incredible gift to write, mm. and, um, and so later on down the line, I would write songs, and people loved to sing them, and um, I had an opportunity to write for Bishop Hezekiah Walker, a song called Better uh, that took off in 2016, and um. Uh, God has blessed me to be able to write. And my grandmother was a minister of music. My mom was a minister of music. My father still is a minister of music. Uh, so um, music runs in my family. All my brothers and sisters sing. His whole family's talented. It's gross. <laughs> I, love I love it so much. I just love how God has brought, the, you know, the two of you together to create cr incredible music. But can you tell us a little bit about how the two of you came together and you're collaborating and you have a new project called Highest Praise and you're releasing new music this Friday. So tell us about how you two met and how God brought you two together. Yeah, I just released a song and like with uh, Toby Max producer, Brian Fowler, and we released a song called Come Jesus Come. And it was the next day. Wow. And so the last thing you do the next day is decide to do something else. And the next day I was on a walk and I just felt like the Lord was like, I was listening to gospel music, which I love, choir music and stuff. And I was like, man, I wish I could do something like this. And I felt like the Lord was like, why not? And, uh, and I was like, well, I'm too white. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is what Moses said. Don't send me, I'm too white. But he, <laughs> I immediately called this guy and, uh, a week later, we were in the studio, and that was wow. it. The, this TV show, The Chosen, reached out to us not long after that and asked us to be a part of their Christmas special last year. And ever since then, we've just been creating. But we've known each other for a long time, but we've been doing this ever since. Coming from two totally different backgrounds, us respecting each other's backgrounds yeah. and loving each other and getting to know each other, that's what the kingdom looks like. It's not, oh, you did this, and I'm pointing at you, or you did this, and I'm pointing at you. No, it's really us coming together and really respecting each other's cultures. Yeah. And then that's where the real love comes in. Because mm -hmm. like everyone wants to be... No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sydney. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, I love what you just said, like, Jason, about respecting each other's cultures, because I think that is such an issue we're seeing right now in culture. But can you just talk a little bit about how you two have learned to respect each other's culture through, you know, worship and with music? Yeah, I think part of it is when you, I look at the gospel culture and I see a culture that knows how to celebrate, right? Like, like really do it well. And I look at, and I can say this, the white worship culture. And I, I see when we have a great worship service and you know, this is true. Everybody's like, everybody cried. It was so beautiful. And the only person celebrating is Kleenex. So we're trying to get us both together. <laughs> we're trying to bring us both together for real though. And learn to like, there's a lot to learn from each other. You know, there's the yeah. celebration, then there's the, the, the reverence and the holiness and like all these things that we're bringing it all together. We're learning to honor each other and find a place where it starts to look like where it says every tongue, every nation mm -hmm. will sing to the Lord, will worship and adore the Lord, right? Uh, that's not, when we get to heaven, there's not going to be a Hillsong room and, uh, a Hezekiah Walker, Kirk Franklin room and a Gaither room. It's every, every tongue, every nation yes. adoring the Lord. And I think it's pretty cool of us to yes. do that try to do it now, at least. I don't know. I'm not saying that we're the only ones, but it's good to see people doing that. It's good to see the church That's right. trying to find a way to come together and really not change each other, but be each other. Because harmony is different notes that make one chord. Yeah, it's good. 
That is so beautiful. We're going to take a quick little break, and when we come back, you're going to hear Jason and Steven sing together, and you're going to hear the song Born a King when we come back in just a little bit. Stay tuned. During this month of Thanksgiving, we want to say a special thank you for your faithful prayers and giving. We're excited to offer you this beautiful gratitude journal with your best gift to Cornerstone Television. With inspirational and thought-provoking prompts and scripture quotes, this guided journal will help you in your discovery of finding peace for anxious moments, joy in life's blessings, confidence to face every moment, and strength to persevere in hardship. This journal also makes an excellent gift. Its soft touch matte lamination gives a silky smooth texture to the hard cover. High quality binding allows pages to lay flat when open and a beautiful satin ribbon conveniently keeps your place. Request this special journal when you give your best gift. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. We're so glad you're joining us on Hope today. And we just had a wonderful conversation with Stevie McWhorter and Jason Claiborne, and they're joining us now. They're gonna sing their song, Born a King. Guys, take it away. Can you hear the angels sing? Mm -hmm. Peace and hope, good will he bring? Christ the Lord in many ways, sent to save us from our sin. Oh, 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 let us come, 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 I feel like I have felt the presence of the Lord. You all remind me of Jesus when I look at you worshiping. And I think it's so important that 100% of our being that we would try to understand each other and give that instead of always wanting to be understood ourselves. 
desire to understand. So you guys are just a true representation of the body of Christ and what it means to come together. But I have a question for Stephen. I wanted to ask you, you know, something you had said about the way that you were raised, you know, that you ran from God. Like, I don't want to know him. And I would just like you to speak to us because I believe yeah. that maybe there's people in our audience that, you know, mm -hmm. we're doing our church thing. But what would you say to them about how important it is to live the life all the time in front of people and behind your closed door of your home? Yeah, I believe real revival, which we talk about a lot, mm -hmm. starts first off with repentance. And that's not a very fun thing to say, but uh, Acts 3.19 says, repent, and then the time of refreshment will come. There's actually blessing attached to it. It's crazy. And um, also, I would say this, that's because who you are in the hiding place, in the place where nobody sees you, is where you're formed, right? That's who you really are. You spend so much time, I always say learn to worship as ministers and worship leaders, learn to live out of the overflow. And what that is, is, it's that place where nobody's watching. You're, you're loving him and spending time with him just to be with him, not because you're preparing for Sunday morning or it's just who you are. And then if you live out of that place, truly getting to know him and loving him well, when nobody's around, nobody's watching, then who you are on a stage is now the overflow of who you are all the time when nobody's watching. And that's the real you. And people will start to say, man, what is it about this person that draws me to the Lord. It's they've spent time with him, right? And so I always just tell people, you know, really seek to love him in that place. Mm -hmm. And that's real relationship. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, anytime you're building a relationship, people see the overflow of your marriage or overflow of the relationship. Mm -hmm. They see, they don't see the behind the scenes. That's the spending time together, the communication, the different things. So when people see us, they say, man, why are they like that? It's the time that we spend with God. I never forget. I was laid out before the Lord in my house. My wife came in and I heard her drop her keys. In the next 30 minutes, I stood up and she was on the floor. I didn't have to say anything to her because the relationship with God that I had was an immediate connection for her to know the presence of the Lord is in this house. Yeah. I need to submit myself to him. That's beautiful. So that's the relationship that people don't see. That's the time and that's what makes... Christianity, not just something that you say. And I, I, let me say this just real quick, if it's okay. Um, and if it's not, you can pull like a shepherd's staff out and like literally pull me off the screen. Uh, but, uh, you know, right now we have a lot of higher profile ministry, different things that are, I won't say anything, but just some things come out and people feel crushed in their faith because they find out this horrible thing or this thing that's been happening. It's because we put our faith in a person and we didn't realize we did. It wasn't a conscious thing. And 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 so the Lord, it's because your relationship has to be formed with him in the secret place. Yeah, that's good. And a lot of pastors and worship people, when we spend time alone, what we're doing is we're rehearsing and preparing for what we're going to do in front of people. I mean, you know, pastors, I'm there too. It's hard for me as a songwriter sometimes to read the Bible without going, ooh, that would make a great song. Or for a pastor to read the Bible without going, this is going to make a great message. This, Barbara needs to hear this. You know, it's like, but that's really, in that place, if we can start doing that stuff for him and only for him, that's right. what comes after that in front of people is going to be more pure. It's going to probably have a power to it that you can't even quantify. That is so, so good. Thank you so much, Jason and Stephen, for all that you shared in your music. And it's just so important for Thank us you. to stay in the secret place and to encounter him. There's nothing like it. We're just so appreciative of the both of you joining us today. Love y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you all. Thank you all. This is such, such a blessing. Tom, what are your uh, thoughts? <laughs> well, you know, uh, so much. There's a word that we, we've we heard in the church uh, the last several years uh, that is so important. It's called authenticity, that we would be authentic people, that we would not any kind of show, God's not into it. God's just not into it. He's not into a TV show. He's not into a show on Sunday morning. He's not into a show on Wednesday night. He's just not into a show. He's into the authentic person that he has created you to be inside. We don't have to, guys. We don't have to put on a show. In fact, 
It's the opposite of what God wants. He wants that authentic person that he loves, that he's created, warts and all, right? Okay, problems and all, but working them out. You know, you work it out and you, and you come out and you say, hey, this is just who I am, but it's, it's God in me that is bringing something of value to the table. That's right. It goes back to we're all a bunch of crack pots. <laughs> <laughs> Jars of there. clay, right? <laughs> yeah, I think crack Steve pot. would like that. But, you know, the reality is the glory of God shines through the brokenness. And may it be Jesus that people see when they see our lives, Sydney, because we don't have it all put together. We need him tremendously. Yes, we surely do. And it's like, like talking about like the crack pots and how we like we're broken. And I um, just reminds me of this art form. We talked about it like I know last week on our show, oh, but yeah, it's a, this art it. form called Kintsugi. It's a Japanese art form where actually the art form itself is all about things that are broken pieces and how they're put together again. And they use silver and gold to put these vessels together again. And I think about God that he is the potter and we are the clay. And so think about how many of us have been broken, how many of us have been shattered, but his hand reaches down deep into yes. the muck and the miry clay and he puts us back together again. And who is isn't it a process, but it's beautiful because of what he's created us to be. So maybe that's you today. Just embrace your hot mess and give it to Jesus. It's my heart just to share to you today. <laughs> so where do you find yourself today? If you find yourself in that situation where maybe, maybe there's a brokenness in you, let the love of God shine out from there. And you know, it's interesting thing about scars, guys, is uh, scars don't hurt after a while, but they're still there. You know, you still see, and it's like, oh, here's where a scar is. Here's where Jesus healed me. You know, here's where I had this, this brokenness. Here's where I had this problem. And, and God has put his healing hand on there. Yeah, I remember it. I can still remember the pain, but I'm healed now. So do you want to be healed today? That's, that's the key is do you want to be healed? Reach out to God. Let, let the love of God flow out from you and let there be a situation where you can say, I was broken and now I'm healed. I was hurting and now I'm, I'm, I'm pain free in that situation. And you know, I know it's a process, but that's what growth is. It's a process. And so whatever you find yourself in today, reach out to him. And I just want to take a moment and say thank you to all of our partners, all of our, the people that are praying for us, the people that are supporting this ministry. Thank you so much that you do that because that way we can bring God's hope and God's healing to those that are hurting. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, unveiling God's plan for humanity. Author and pastor Pierre G. Rosa explores the book of Revelation and provides a detailed look at what we can expect in the days ahead. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.